Today I'd like to explore the difference between bearing load and remote load. So I have a component here that I'd like to analyze. And I'm going to apply a bearing load to one hole and a remote load to the other. Both are, are attempting to model perhaps a shaft being passed through each one of these holes and then an applied load of 100 newtons in the vertical y direction. We're going to look at the differences in terms of stress and strain. So first of all, let's create a new study. So it's going to be a static study. And then we are going to apply materials. And alloy steel sounds good. There we go. Uh, we are going to fix the top geometry there. Perhaps this face is welded to another component. I'll check mark there. And now what we need to do is load or apply a load to the hole here or, and here. But the problem with this, though, if we were to do this directly, we would apply a load to the entire surface of the cylinder. We really don't want to do that. We want to apply the load to the bottom portion of each of the cylinders. So what we need to do is generate a split surface for here and here. And in addition, when we apply our remote load, we need a point to apply the load from. And also for the bearing load, we need a geometry or coordinate system to work from. So here is the global geometry right here, uh, or global coordinate system, should I say. We also need to create one for each one of the holes. So our first job is to go back to our model and then go to Features, Reference Geometry, and Point. So we are going to select this circle here. I'm going to actually select the arc center, which then, as you can see, generates a point on the center of that circle. Okay, so select that as point one. Now, let's do something a little different. Let's select a point, and this time I'll go for the center of the face. So I click here, click on the blue. This time I'm going to click select the entire cylinder. So as you can see now, we have a point which is in the center of the cylinder itself. Okay, I accept that. Great. That will be point two. Um, the next thing we need to do is go back into geometry again and create a coordinate system. So I'm going to go to point one. Whoops. Point one. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to invert the y-axis. There we go. So it's pointing down now. And I'll accept that. And I'll go to point two. And again, reference geometry, coordinate system. And point two, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to invert the y-axis and check. Okay. So we have two coordinate systems. Okay. The next thing we need to do is when we apply a load, we need to make sure that we have split the cylinder because we don't want to apply loads to the entire surface of the hole. We want to apply it just to this uh, bottom surface right here. So what I need to do now is go into insert, curve, split line. I need to select a face. So I'll select the top face. So everything now is parallel to that face. And I will select then both cylinders. There we go. And I'm using the silhouette and check. So now you can see I've split the surface for both holes. Great. So now what I'd like to do is go back into our study. And as you can see, I've fixed the top of our component. So that's the welded part. Now I'm going to apply loads here and here. I'm going to apply a remote load to this hole centered on the center of the cylinder. And I'm going to apply a bearing load to this hole. OK. So loads, bearing load, select the surface. Um, I could select also the coordinate system. There we go. And I'm going to use the Y direction. And with the coordinate system, the Y direction is pointing in the correct direction. That was the reason I uh, inverted the Y axis. 
and then we're going to apply our hundreds. And also I'm going to keep it as a sinusoidal distribution. So in other words, the distribution force will be non-linear across our, this surface right here. Next, I'll apply a remote load okay, to the other hole right here. And I'm going to use a user-defined coordinate system. In fact, I'm going to use coordinate system 2. I'm going to come down, and with a force, I'm going to apply 100 newtons. And it's in the correct direction because the coordinate system, if you remember, I reversed the y-axis. If not, I would just check this box here. Okay, so here's my remote load, and here's my bearing load. Okay, so now we are ready to create mesh. I'll accept what SolidWorks suggests, and then run. So as you can see, based on both of the holes, the difference between the two loads. The remote load is loaded essentially across the entire bottom half of the hole. The bearing load, if you remember, has a sinusoidal distribution with a peak, of course, in the, on the y-axis. So that's the reason for the difference in stress. So when we perform a modeling, we must be very, very careful what kind of load we're going to apply to our hose. And that ends this lecture.